boys and girls everywhere. You just ought to see all of Popeye's morning mail. It seems all the boys want to be football players, and they're eating Popeye's favorite cereal because it makes muscles. And it looks like all the girls want to grow up in a hurry and be young ladies, so they eat Wheat Tina too, because Wheat Tina's regular growing food. And my, the roses it puts into their cheeks, yes sir. And mm, boy, how good it tastes. Well, any other boys and girls want muscles or want to grow? Okay, tell your mother you want delicious Wittina tomorrow. <laughs> Mix peanuts and popcorn, we find Popeye, Whiffy, Hoff, and Mamie visiting at the zoo. All hands are having one grand and glorious time. They just walked up to the camel's cage. Well, blow me down! Has you ever seen the lights of such a peculiar animal? Gosh, Popeye, those humps on his back look just like your muscles. <laughs> if I had muscles that big, I'd never get my shirt off. I heard a camel could go nine days without water. Tut tut, a trivial thing. Going nine days without a hamburger would be an accomplishment worthy of my admiration. <laughs> oh, Wimpy, that's just plain ignorant. Dumb animals never eat fried hamburgers. Perhaps that's why they're called dumb animals. <laughs> Popeye, do you think the camel would like some peanuts? No, you has me stumped, matey. I know squirrels and elephants eat peanuts, but I never seen a camel eat them. Well, I'll see if this one does. I'm proud of you, maybe, and a county you wants to share what you got with others. Here, Camel, would you like a peanut? In Camel language, he means desist, stop, quit that. Oh, be careful, lady. Don't stick your hand in that cage. Ah, uh, he wouldn't hurt me. But I guess Popeye is right. He don't like peanuts. What if I were in the cage and the good public came to feed me? <laughs> Come on, all hands, aft to the oven cage, so many can feed up peanuts. Look, me 
its lonely Frankfurters lie lordly hamburger. So they is. Oh, Papa, don't torture me. I don't understand your whippy. Papa, you're a fiend. Peanuts for me, lemonade for olive, but what? Oh, what for whippy? Did you want some peanuts? Peanuts? Peanuts he offers me. Papa, this kind gentleman also sells hamburger. Oh, does you want a hamburger with these hours? He toys with me. How can you be so cruel? <laughs> My craving for those luscious hamburgers has me faint. So you'd like to have a hamburger sport? So this is a plot to rob me of my sanity. Hey, Papa, I think Whippy does want a hamburger. Maybe I have my suspicions. That's what he's trying to tell us. I feel a beast inside me rising. Oh, well, why don't you try a glass of this lemonade, Wimpy? It's delicious. Demons, all of you. <laughs> all right. Hey, mister, see if Wimpy will eat a hamburger. OK, boss, come on the right now. I am trembling with anticipated ecstasy. Here you go, sport. Thousand thanks, royal purveyor, heavenly delectables. Oh, glorious hamburger. Only Jane Willington Wimpy can appreciate your scrumptious vitamins. <clears throat> Gee, Wimpy ate that hamburger fast. A pity that such hamburger were not twins. Perhaps even quintuplets. <laughs> Here's your money, mister. How do you like it? Thanks, a boss. My friends, we set sail to the elephant cage. Weigh anchor, all hands! Junior Rodent. Greetings, Mickey. Hey, look out! It's a 
animal is returning. I stands right here and stops the elephant. Man alive! How can you stop a wild elephant? I grabs him by his nose. Here he comes! Get out of the way! I'm not scared of no elephant. Run! He'll trample you down! I said I catches him by the nose.
We have with us tonight a very special guest this evening, and he has kindly agreed to say a few words. He is a star of stage, screen, and it was often said that millions of Americans would rather miss church on Sunday than his weekly radio show. Please welcome America's cowboy philosopher, Mr. Will Rogers. It's great to see all of you. I just wanted to come up and, and check for a while. How are you anyway? Good? Well, that's good. You know, I never know exactly how to begin my act. And there have been those that have said that it wasn't absolutely necessary to do so. But uh, we will start with those three very important words. I was born. And, uh, well, it was. I was born in the Indian Territory, which is now the state that you know as Oklahoma. And I was born in a little town called Oolaga. Now, only an Indian can pronounce Oolaga, so don't even try. Now, I was raised on land that was given to us by treaty from the U.S. government. And the treaty said, you may have this land as long as the grass grows, and the water flows, and uh, well, it's not only a pretty good rhyme, it was a pretty good treaty, until we discovered oil. And then they took all the land back from us. They said the treaty refers to grass and water, it don't say nothing about oil, and uh, that's where my mistrust of the government began. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna get one thing straight here, and that is somebody come up to me and they said, well, you can't, you can't call them Indians anymore. And I said, my goodness, why not? As long as I was this high, well, I would have called each other Indians all the time. I mean, uh, my father was a 3 H Cherokee Indian, and my mother was a quarter blood. And, well, I never got far enough in arithmetic to figure out just how much Indian that makes me. <laughs> but there is nothing in my life that I am prouder of than my Indian heritage. And maybe, ladies and gentlemen, what we ought to do is spend a little less time being concerned about what we call each other, a little more time, um, how we treat each other. What do you think about that? Oh, that's nice, that's nice. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a lot of other details. I'll just uh, let me jump ahead here to the fact that I went to school in Oolaga, in a little one-room schoolhouse. And I got up to the fourth grade, and folks, I'm not going to lie to you, I was not very good in school, and I, I cut out after the fourth grade. Now, I see there's a lot of young people here today. I don't want you to think that this uh, put me against education, because it's not true. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anything in my life which I am more regretful, it's that I never took a chance on the fifth grade. <laughs> now, my parents, my, my father was a very prominent judge down there in the Indian Territory, and he figured maybe military school is what I needed. So uh, for eighth grade, they sent me to the Kemper Military Academy, and I spent the first year in the eighth grade and the second year at the guardhouse. <laughs> well, just that equally as bad. And then finally, I just, folks, I tell you what, I just, I just cut out. I've had enough. I started to learn my rope tricks, and I, I went to the Zayfield Follies, and luckily I was successful there. Now, folks, I was going to bring my ropes along tonight and do a few rope tricks for you, but Tyler, he's the man in charge here, he says, Will, I don't think that's a very good idea. And I said, why not? And he said, well, musicians get very nervous when they see someone coming towards them with a rope in their hand. <laughs> so we'll have to forego it for tonight. I'm going to do a little bit of my act that served me well for many, many years in the Zinfield Follies. Now, folks, I don't make up my little jokes. I just read what's in the papers, and that's it. Okay? Now, I'm going to start tonight. I've saved some, some newspapers here from my travels, and uh, a couple of them I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. Now, I'm going to start here, folks, with the New York Times whose motto is, all the news that's fit to print. The New York Times, New York Times. 
And uh, folks, I've done this act for years and years and years. And I tell you, the papers, they have never failed me once. Until tonight. <laughs> Traffic 
problem. Here. And it's, it's talking about uh, uh, game day traffic. I understand you got a somewhat of a football team up here. And uh, oh, I understand you got your quarterback. His name is Roger Stu. <laughs> to move. <laughs> All right, now I got a solution for your traffic problems here in Green Bay. Now, I got two solutions. Now, the first one is kind of scientific. So I do not want your eyes to waver from my form. Okay? The Will Rogers solution, number one, to traffic problems. Everybody going east, go on Tuesday. <laughs> Everybody going west, go on Wednesday. North and south, forget about it. No. If you don't like that solution, I got one more solution for your traffic problem, and that is that no car be allowed on the road until it's paid for. <laughs> we will turn those boulevards into playgrounds overnight. I found this one about a year ago in the Green Bay Press because they had all the news against you bits. Now, on the front page of the Green Bay Press Gazette is a picture of the world's largest hot dog. You must be very proud of <laughs> The world's largest hot dog makes the front page of the Green Bay Press Gazette. Now, that's, that's good enough, but what caught my eye was the article that's right next to it here, and it says, Cremation Center Surprises De Pere Neighbors. <laughs> you gotta admit, if you wake up one day, you know, and you're next door to a cremation center, you're gonna be a little shocked. But the, 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 funny, thing, the funny thing about this whole thing was, for the longest time, I thought that that picture went with that article. presidential primary and uh, congratulations for that. Now, I'm, I'm, I just want to tell you something and that is that this being a president is a thankless job. It is a thankless job. Keep in mind that neither Washington nor Lincoln ever had a statue made of them until everybody was sure they was dead. <laughs> The, uh, but I will give you just one little bit of advice on how to live your life, folks. Just live your life in such a way that you wouldn't be afraid to sell the family parrot to the town gossip. <laughs> I'm excited, folks, because next week I'm going up to Alaska. I'm going to fly up to Alaska with my, with my good friend, Wiley Post. I'm going to visit the Indians up there. Warning about the government, <laughs> about the grass growing and the water flowing. And uh, people always ask me, they say, Will, how can you make fun of the politicians all the time? And that folks, they're mostly friends of mine. And, you know, I've traveled around this world, and let me tell you, never met a man I didn't like. Good night, folks.